Today we're going to try to get this jack replaced in this old livestock trailer so that we can now start using it fully and it's not such a pain to crank up and down. Stick around and we'll show you how. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Purpose Driven Homestead. Today's task is we're gonna try to replace that jack on this livestock trailer. Now, if you remember, we picked up this livestock trailer, I don't know, probably a month and a half, two months ago now. We used it to get our hogs back in here, and my brother actually used this to take a bull uh, over to market. So the trailer has gotten some use already, which we're really excited about, and it's actually in really good shape. There's a few rusty spots in it, but to get it used and as old a trailer as it is, we're pretty happy with what we've got. Now, however, there is one big challenge with this trailer is that jack on the front. That jack has been just a challenge from day one. It is really difficult to, to crank up and down. What happened is the gentleman that owned the trailer before us, he used a, a skid steer to move it more often than not. So he had a ball set up on the front of his skid steer on the bucket, and he would move it around with that. Well, what he was doing one time is he wasn't paying attention. Pay attention. And he pushed into the trailer and he bent the bottom of the uh, the jack. So there's actually a, a bent part there. I'll show you in a second, but that has made this thing really difficult. The jack itself needs to be replaced, but we're gonna probably need to do a little bit of body work to the trailer to flatten out the plate that it's mounted on to see if we can make this thing a little bit easier to use. As you can see here, this thing is bent pretty bad, right? So it's leaning back. And maybe if I get a little horizontal here, you'll be able to see more. Uh, it's, it's definitely at an angle. And I've got to replace all this. Now you can see how when it was pushed back, all of this buckled. So you can see all of this is kind of at an angle. It's puckered up. This whole piece was bent up, and then this has been bent as well. Yeah, well, that is unfortunate. So we're going to have to work on that a little bit, but first we've got to get these bolts off. Now, as you can see here, we've got this is the replacement one. It's uh, very, very similar to the one that we have here. Uh, but obviously it's newer and the crank will be much easier to use. Uh, but we've got to get this one off first. But before we do that, I've got to actually take this and put it onto the center block. We're going to have to raise it up. Then I can get this thing centered underneath it and I can get this done. But the first thing I do is I have to put this center block under it and then I can take the pressure off of this jack. Now I want to just kind of show you how bad this thing is. So you can see what I'm letting down. This is, this is to bring it up. I can't even hardly move it. And when you try to take it down, it's just as difficult. This thing is a beast. Oh, that's bad. That's even worse. This thing is now loose. You can see it's now off the ground down there. Woo, I'm pooped. That was a chore. I'm going to take these uh, bolts off and then we're going to see if we can straighten some of the stuff out. All right, so this is a 9 16 wrench and that's not a good sign. This is already loose. I haven't done anything with that. So these, uh, this could be an interesting process right here. So this thing works, uh, this is just a little cobalt. I don't have any affiliation with these guys. I just got this at Lowe's. Um, but uh, you push this button and it opens it up and then you ratchet this down to whatever degree you want to. So in this case, come in here, we'll just squeeze it down and then we'll use this to tighten it off because I just couldn't get anything in there. a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be because two of the three, so these should all be threaded. So you can see that these are threaded on the inside here. Uh, all of these should be threaded, but this one was kind of threaded. So what happened is somebody must have come at some point in the past and put a nut on the bottom of this. It's a lock, wall, a lock nut. Uh, so I was trying to get this thing off, trying to figure out what was going on. And then finally, I just kind of dawned on me. I'm like, there must be something on the bottom side. So I found this nut on the bottom side. Once I got that off, it was a lot easier. So, all right, got those three off now. Next thing, and I've already slacking this off some, is I gotta get this piece off down here. This just screws off. This bolt comes out on the other side. This stuff is super rusty. You can see it's definitely time, definitely time to get this replaced. So 
that stuff is just super rusty. Put it up there. So that allows for this piece to fall off. Now this will slide out. And now we're cooking. Now let's see what we got going on. All right, you can see that this piece is bent up here. So there's a roll where when he pushed it back, it bent, it, it tilted this thing back at the bottom and it wrinkled this. So we're gonna see if we can beat this down and get it somewhat flat to make a better fit when we put this new one on. We'll see. So we're gonna definitely make sure that we keep our feet from out from underneath here. So I'm gonna stand on this side and we're gonna, This is what you call lightly persuading. Did you guys see that? I broke my center block. I broke my center block right down the center. That is not good. I got to come up with a different plan here. I guess I didn't really think that through. Hmm. That's why we don't put our feet underneath it. That was not anticipated. Okay. I gotta get something else underneath here. All right, well, this is what I should have done to start off with. So I got my uh, ton and a half jack underneath here and I actually had it beside me thinking, oh, maybe I'll need it, but I hadn't used it yet. So I just put a, big six by six block underneath here and uh now i'll get this <laughs> i'll get this big old center block out of here bummer should have known better that's how accidents happen so all right now let's see if i can finish the job here All right, hit my little cage here one time, but I think I'll be all right. I got to do a little rep repair work on that anyway. The battery's gone. I think I got some problems with the cables. So, all right, I got that a lot flatter. All right, so I got this a lot better. It's not perfect yet. So you can see that I got this back side here, this back side here, these two holes. They're really close to flat now, but I've got this ridge right here that sinks down. It's a, it's a ridge on the bottom side or a dip right here. Pull my wire out of the way here. You can see that this dips down still right here, which means the back side of this hole is just a little bit lower than the rest of this. This is pretty much flat. That's pretty much flat. And then the front of this is flat, but then it kind of slopes back because of this. So what he did is when he pulled forward on it with the jack in there, the, the it rolled forward and it pushed down on this front piece here and it and it bent it down and it bent this back part up. So I was able to beat this down. This piece, I'm gonna try to leave it as is. If I have to, I can come back and beat on the bottom side of it down here with a piece of metal and try to bend this back up to flatten it out. But we're gonna see if we can work with it as is. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing. Also, give it a big thumbs up. Helps the algorithm think that this is a video worth watching. You can really see the difference here in these two jacks. Look at how much that's bent. I mean, it is just, I don't know what, he, when, I don't know how hard he pushed on with that skid steer, but obviously this thing is in bad shape. So now we're going to put this one on and this little job will be done. All right, so now we're just going to reverse this process. Can you reverse the process? We might be able to reverse the process. I've already taken the foot off here. Well, we got to turn this. Turn it this way so that's on that side. All right. Now, this thing has a little hip, it's like a piece here that allows you to pull this up and get it in different spots. So you can actually make some manual adjustments here. So let's get this thing mounted and uh, we'll kind of go from there. But let's make sure that these holes line up. Oh boy, they kind of line up. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna have to get creative here. All right, I went 
got a little bit of WD-40 to put on these because um, I started figuring out that the rust is just making it really difficult to get these into the hole. So see if I can't do this without cross-threading a screw or bolt here. Piece right here, there is a bolt that sits on this other side so that this piece has can pull out against it. So this bolt, this piece right here, makes it very difficult to get in here. It's just a tiny little space to get your finger in there. So you kind of have to tilt it up in order to get your finger in there. So it just makes it a little bit harder. All right, you can see here we got two of our bolts in. Took a little bit of finagling, but we got it. The problem is with this third. Should have been universal, but I've actually had this happen on another trailer. Whatever it is that they don't make them the right size. This piece had to be on this side. It couldn't be on this back side because of the way the battery was sitting. It couldn't be on the front side because of this. So this was the only way that this could sit, uh, but I'll have to figure this out. I think it was supposed to be that this piece sat on the front, but it's an equilateral triangle. So I don't think that there's a, I don't think there's any difference between them, but this is the only way it would work. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go down on this side I'll have to drill a small hole through, kind of away from where the original hole was, and then uh, thread a bolt through it. But it'll be fine for now. These two bolts will easily hold this trailer up. Uh, but we got it down. We got our foot on. All right, so now the, I can take this piece, I can pull this pin, and this will now slide down, and I can make this a lot longer. And so now all we have to do is make sure that locks into place. There we go. Now this is the pin that goes through here. So we'll put that pin in there. Now we can crank this down. It gives us a lot more space. See down here at the bottom. Now we're making contact. We're actually taking this block off. You can see it moving because we're taking the weight off of it. All right. Now we can take our jack out, take the block out. Should be a pretty good spot. And with that, guys, that's the end of that little project. Not a huge video today, but it was something that we needed to get done on our homestead. We got dirty hands, right? We got rusty hands, but that's because that was something that was just a chore. Trying to get that thing jacked up, it was a lot of effort. Now we've got a nice jack that's sitting underneath there, and that's something that you guys may have to do as well. If you have trailers, uh, those jacks just sometimes go bad. Now, this one was obviously had a little bit of... Uh, damage i'm gonna call it abuse because we all make mistakes we all have problems right we sometimes that make have accidents so this guy just had an accident uh, with this trailer and he pushed it back and he bent that uh, piece but i think we're able to get it in good shape i've got to still drill that piece out and get that last one in but the two screws will easily hold the weight of that trailer we'll put nuts on the bottom uh, just as a precaution similar to what they did as well for that one but we'll do it for all three and then we now have a fully functioning trailer that we can jack up as we needed and move it around as we needed as well so that's a good win for our homestead We've got another Borling that we're gonna go pick up. We probably won't use the trailer for that. He's gonna be really small. Uh, so we've got a Borling we'll pick up in a couple of weeks as well to bring onto our homestead. Then we'll be able to have our own little piggies once he matures. And so that's something that we're trying to get done. Uh, but it's just little things like that that make life infinitely easier when you try to use used trailers and try to get them up to speed. So thank you guys so much for joining. Have a blessed day and we'll see you next time on the Purpose Driven Homestead.